Hey, Matt here. Rather than focus on one particular element, I just thought I would go through and do a series of videos on a bunch of random information. Seems um, just if I chuck some information out there, uh, several people have said that they seem to pick up some stuff good that way, so this is just going to be random. Um, so just starting over here with the harvester section, uh, just kind of running through things. Uh, pretty straightforward. The uh, M button here lets you load a footprint file in which case you can put tokens in there like percent kw percent and it'll insert um, whatever you put on either side of that and put your whatever keywords are here where that token is um, you can also simply type anything you want in here so if you typed in like site for instance um, whatever it's going to append the whatever you type here in front of all your keywords here so pretty straightforward there um, you can then clear that footprint of course that would all be under custom footprint. You can of course search for WordPress, movable type, and blog engine with their built-in footprints. And any keywords in here, it'll tell you the number here in your proxies. And um, it'll just give you, it'll list all your keywords out here. You can of course import keyword files. Um, you can scrape uh, different keywords, which we'll go over in a second. You can of course then save those keyword files. You can remove duplicates. When you hit remove duplicates, it's just gonna remove them. So I've typed a few out here. It's not gonna tell you anything, it just removes them. So it just takes away the duplicates. And then of course clear just clears everything out. Um, under the scraper, there's two, two scrapers. There's the uh, original keyword scraper where you type in a list of keywords over here on the left. You select your sources, pretty straightforward. Um, you can select Google or the various Google options. You can hit scrape and it will scrape out keywords and put over here. Then you can, you know, remove duplicates, move them back over here and do it some more. You can achieve a lot of good results by using different ones. So pick a couple, scrape, uncheck those, pick a new couple, scrape, remove duplicates, keep moving them back and forth and just keep selecting different ones and you can use the different sources uh, together to create some pretty good files. Uh, pretty good sets of keywords. Um, then there is the new Wonder Wheel Scraper, which is very nice as well. Uh, you select your engine over here, throw in your keyword here, and then you select your level. You can go all the way five levels deep, and um, it will scrape. So if I put in car, it'll scrape all the results for car. Then it, on level one, then it will turn around and scrape all of the results for those results. So if it gives me 10 results for car, it'll scrape the 10 suggestions off of those results and then so on and so forth down the chain all the way up into the hundreds of thousands depending on your keywords. You can also load up a list of keywords although I'd be careful about loading massive lists of keywords because it's going it could potentially scrape a couple hundred thousand keywords for each and every keyword that you throw in here. Um, and uh, if you put in, you know, if you load up a list of 100,000 keywords, it's likely your machine will freeze before it ever finishes, in which case you might lose it all. So be judicious there and use smaller lists, uh, at least to test with, depending on your machine, and uh, you'll probably have better results. Of course, hit start, pretty straightforward, abort, pretty straightforward, and exit. Um, you can export what's left over. You get your um, various export options here. Pretty straightforward again. It's a great scraper. You need to make sure you have proxies in there to work with it. Um, same thing on the other scraper so you don't get your IP banned by the engines. Um, jumping down into the select engines and proxies section, nothing major here. You get to select your engines here. Of course, there's a drop down where you can select your different Googles um, and put more in there. Um, always a good idea to use proxies, most generally for the largest portion of what you would do. Um, the results box, pretty straightforward. If you want to scrape 10 results for each keyword for each engine, so I check Google, put 10 results, and I get 10 results, um, which is a great troubleshooting step because like I had a guy one time who couldn't figure out why he thought scrape box was broken and he can only get 10 results for every keyword. Well, he had 10 selected here instead of 1,000, and um, it's always good when you have an issue to go back to the basics and look at basic things. Um, if you need to scrape uh, based on a certain time frame, you can hit the time option and it'll give you different options for the engines based on what they support and when you can scrape so I can get everything in Google that's come online in the past 24 hours per se. Um, kind of handy in different scenarios. Uh, proxies are pretty straightforward but still see a lot of questions on them. Um, if you want to use a SOX proxy, it has to have an S in front of it. And then the proxy, of course, proxy format is the uh, IP address and then colon and then the port. Um, standard proxy would just be the IP address and then colon and then the port and then colon and then username and password if their username and password is applicable. Um, again, pretty straightforward there. 
Um, loading up lists of proxies, saving off lists of proxies, and clearing out is all pretty straightforward. Uh, manage proxies has had some changes over the past um, dozen updates or so. Some really nice features in here. It actually lets you harvest proxies from the original Scrapebox sources and custom define your own. So we can do harvest proxies and we have the standard sources. We can also throw in our own custom ones. We can add a source. We can type in the URL of the source. We can type in from a file if we have a bunch of URLs from the clipboard if we've copied a few and then we can even get socks one. So any URL scrape from a SOX source will automatically append the S to it and put those in there and then anything on the rest of these is going to um, not append the S to it. So if you're going to do a SOX source, make sure you put it in the SOX one here. Um, won't go into depth on it and the requirements on that, but it's pretty straightforward. It's going to scrape the proxies on the page. So um, you need to have a source that that individual page has regular updates, not just it's not going to spider the site and look for proxies it's just going to scrape the proxies from that source um, then we can check different ones and we can remove selected or add selected of course start um, we can abort we can have it to replace the current list of proxies or not cancel and okay so pretty straightforward there very nice um, you get to be able to choose your own custom sources of course loading up lists and merging that's pretty straightforward um, this happens to be the uh, new proxy management tab um, the old proxy one would not give you the option to ignore Google and you can change that under um, options I think it is up here uh, if you're gonna be doing things with Google obviously you wouldn't want to ignore Google but if you're doing anything else like posting or scraping Yahoo or Bing or anything else you would probably on obviously want to ignore Google because you're gonna get a better result test and abort straightforward unlock lets you unlock proxies for that session in that scrape box instance that is um, working with Google cleanup is pretty straightforward you can remove duplicate ones and filter out high latency ones which is important if you're going to use public proxies for posting it's generally a good idea to use lower latency ones get a better result um, exporting is pretty straightforward as well you can save the good ones or save them all you can even create a report and then you can close it down um, so proxies and engines are pretty straightforward um, under URLs Harvester, there's also been some changes in the past uh, past several updates some people still don't uh, know about. So if we go over and we um, import a list, for instance, and we just want to pick up um, just a, a list I have here for testing, um, this list is not randomized necessarily. Um, or wait a minute, I apologize. It's not randomized. Um, so it's all in numeric alphabetical order. If you bring in a list that is randomized, Scrapebox will no longer alter the list and sort it alphabetically automatically. You can click the URLs tab and it will sort them either from top to bottom or bottom to top alphabetically um, and numerically. Uh, but if you if you export over here and you randomize um, and then you re-import, it will maintain the randomization here. Um, so that's that's important to know because that gives you options to work with. Um, you can also sort by page rank if you have checked the page rank. Um, this is also the section where you would start harvesting, stop harvesting for scraping based off of your harvester keywords and your proxies. And then of course your list that you have here you can transfer them down below or various places and then clear them out. Um, jumping over here, pretty straightforward, got a few things going on. Um, that some people don't know about. Removing duplicate URLs and duplicate domains is easy. Um, splitting off duplicate domains is really handy. I have some people that, that come in and they say, um, well, how do I get post? I want to post to three URLs on each domain, but no more. So let me talk about how to split the duplicate domains. And so just due to YouTube's time limitation, I have to cut this video off and that we will continue talking about splitting off duplicate URLs in random video number two.